Hi, my name is Thais Gibson, and I'm the creator of the Personal Development School. This is your daily breakthrough video, and in this video, I want to talk to you a little bit about the anxious preoccupied attachment style, and this is from an integrated attachment theory perspective. So for those of you that didn't know, um, over the past 10 years or so, I've published a body of work um, called Integrated Attachment Theory that's been trademarked and all that good stuff, and um, is basically about traditional attachment styles being overlapped with um, different features of um, human healing and human conditioning, which has so much to do with um, each individual's core wounds, their needs from a relationship, their expectations in relationships, their different emotional patterns, their coping mechanisms and behaviors, um, and the way they communicate in relationships as well. So we sort of cover these different features of like this individual in a relationship. And um, I'm going to share some of those things with you today from the anxious preoccupied perspective. So the anxious preoccupied attachment cell is obviously the most anxious on the attachment sort of continuum. And this is because they have a lot of conditioning around abandonment, um, but also a lot of positive conditioning around what connection is. So they tend to really seek out and value and want connection, but then also have this constant incessant fear, like it will drop off or they will, it will be taken away or sort of the rug will be pulled out from under them in close relationships. And this often stems from in childhood, having either a real form of abandonment where a caregiver leaves or there's a divorce or, or a parent passes away um, or a perceived set of abandonment that occurs across time. So a lot of inconsistency in relationships where somebody may be loving and then really emotionally unavailable or one caregiver is emotionally available, the other is really not, um, or both parents are really loving, but they work all the time. So there's like a lot of good, but then a lot of that good being taken. And essentially what takes place is the anxious preoccupied individual copes by trying to just like do everything they can to maintain proximity, um, to get closer and closer to connection. And then these are the conditioned patterns that we bring into our adult attachment cell relationships. So all of a sudden, you know, fast forward all these years and these same core wounds still exist. And you can think of your attachment cell sort of as being like the rule book for how to do relationships. So when people have different attachment styles, it's like them playing a board game with a different set of rules, right? Like one person's playing Monopoly and another person's playing like tic-tac-toe and like you'll see all the confusion take place unnecessarily. So by understanding our attachment style patterns, but really specifically, not just the, these overviews of attachment styles, but specifically like the core wounds, the needs, the expectations, the behavioral patterns, the communication patterns, the emotions, you know, these really fundamental and important components um, and the coping mechanisms, right? Like when we see these, these features, all of a sudden, we start to have these very specific things we can hone in on and start healing. And so this is what I'm going to break down here for you today is really how this works. If you want to do a much deeper dive into the actual reconditioning part, I have a free course you can check out on anxious attachment style reprogramming using the link below, and it's available for free for, for seven days. Um, so some common characteristics is you'll see the anxious preoccupied attachment style person um, be anxious, be needy um, when, when they feel like somebody's pulling away from them, but they can also be like very charismatic, very kind. They usually adapt by trying to get good at, at connecting with people. So they're often very like attentive in close relationships, warm, likable, friendly, um, and they tend to move quickly in relationships of any kind, friendships as well. Um, and they tend to really prioritize a lot of their lives by their relationships and social interactions. The big core wounds and fears that they have are the fear of being abandoned. And there's a huge fear of being unsafe. Um, something that's really important to pay attention to is that closeness, attachment as a child meant safety and survival because we are not a species that can come out of the womb and just go out and survive on our own a few days later. We really need to rely on our caregivers for survival. So when an anxious preoccupied child feels like there's this impending sort of abandonment all the time, they will often feel really unsafe as well. And so this is actually a form of attachment trauma. You'll see adult um, individuals when they're feeling needy or they call many times or they text a lot over and over again, that's actually rooted in a trauma response. That's rooted in attachment trauma and, and a strategy being developed to try to maintain proximity and closeness in order to stay safe, in order to survive, in order to avoid abandonment. Other big core wounds are the fear of being alone. We'll often hear this come in the form of stories for anxious individuals, like I'll be alone forever, I'll never have anybody. The fear of not being good enough, the fear of being rejected, 
the fear or core wound, these are interchangeable, by the way, fear and core wound um, of being unloved. And also anxious preoccupied individuals have a big wound around feeling excluded or disliked. Um, and this manifests a lot in like social interactions, but can also be if like their partner goes away for the weekend and doesn't include them or invite them with their friends, like these can be, be really big wounds for the AP. Um, emotional tendencies and patterns is they tend to identify most, you'll sort of see different attachment cells have different emotions. Like you'll see, for example, fearful avoidance identify a lot with the emotion of anger. Um, DAs a lot with the, the feeling of numbness um, or irritation and patience, like different attachment cells have different emotional patterns I discovered. So you'll see that um, APs tend to feel lonely, sad, um, fearful, anxious, worried when they think that somebody's going to pull away or abandon them. Um, sometimes we'll feel the feeling of desperation um, and loneliness, insecurity, and regret may be things as well. I find that APs often like regret, like I shouldn't have said this. I shouldn't have done this. It's all my fault. Um, even though sometimes they are actually taking more responsibility than they should be for things in relationships. And sometimes there's co-responsibility and AP sort of take it all on themselves. Um, some big needs in a relationship. So imagine these needs being like what the relationship needs to survive. It's sort of like the lifeblood of a relationship. Um, and these are love, intimacy, closeness, and connection. These are huge for anxious, preoccupied individuals. When these cups are full, they actually feel quite safe and secure. Um, validation, reassurance, approval, and importance. They often want to feel important or prioritized. Um, a sense of certainty. You'd be surprised at how much AP's trauma response of like needing proximity and trying to close the gap is actually rooted in the need for certainty and safety at the same time. So certainty, consistency, presence, safety. APs also really want to feel seen, heard, and understood. Um, and they also really care about inclusion, community, collaboration, and teamwork. And this tends to be more in like their other relationships, not just um, romantic, because you'll see that our attachment style literally affects us in the workplace, affects us um, at home, you know, we have an attachment style in the workplace course, like, you know, all these different um, features of our personality, our fears, our wounds, our communication patterns, our needs, they really spill it onto everything because we are carrying ourselves with us everywhere, right? So if this is our individual conditioning, this goes into the workplace, this goes into the home, our romance, our, our friends, all these different areas. Um, the relationship to boundaries. So APs are often boundaryless in their close relationships, and they will often eventually feel unloved or abandoned when others put up boundaries as a result, because they expect to have a boundaryless relationship overall. And this is the way they've learned to try to attach to others. They feel very afraid of abandonment if they were to put up a boundary. It tends to be a big block for why APs struggle with boundaries. Whenever I'm working with APs, I actually help them recondition the fears first around boundaries before even attempting to set boundaries. Um, and they will often self-sabotage boundaries because they see them as threats to the need for proximity and closeness. And they often really don't realize the, the importance of healthy boundaries and the need for healthy interdependency. They tend to operate from a purely codependent space in their romantic partnerships. Um, and that, again, spills into other relationships as well. Some AP common expectations are that my partner should soothe me and I should soothe them right? Where actually we, we want co-regulation. I want to be able to soothe me and lean on you for soothing and vice versa. It should be both, not one or the other, not mutually exclusive. Um, my partner should give me certainty and reassurance at all times. And these are not necessarily conscious things, right? These are our subconscious patterns. So like the AP may look at this and consciously know, hey, that's not possible. I know better. But subconsciously, when that's not happening, there's a trigger, right? So subconscious expectations to be very clear. Um, my partner should know how I feel and read my minds. My partner is responsible for meeting all my needs. I'm responsible for meeting all of theirs. You can see these codependent patterns in here. My partner should always be available. Again, consciously, the AP probably knows better, but subconsciously, these are the needs. And when those are not, or these are the expectations. And when those are not fulfilled, we experience triggering and dysregulation of the nervous system. Um, the, a romantic relationship should be everybody's highest priority in life, big common one. Um, and romantic gestures in a relationship should be frequent. But the reality is people have different love languages and ways of expressing love. And these need to be things that are talked about, okay? So these expectations are not necessarily right or wrong, but when they're not communicated, they're often not met and then they can be sparks for triggering in relationships. Um, then we're gonna talk about behavioral communication patterns and behavioral coping mechanisms. Um, but I do wanna say, 
if you want to do a deep dive into anxious preoccupied reprogramming and actually healing your attachment style, this is what you need. You need to be able to pluck out the core wounds, the boundaries, the communication patterns, and work on each of these aspects individually. And we have a whole course you can check out for free on this called anxious attachment style reprogramming. Um, and it does a really deep dive into this. And you can check it out for free for seven days using the link below. Um, I'm also doing a training uh, this October 5th, and it's every Wednesday um, for eight weeks. It's live with me, and it is all about integrated attachment theory, healing, how to help other people heal, how to recognize people's attachment styles, how to reprogram the subconscious mind and recondition these patterns. And um, it also does a deep dive in the very last week of the eight weeks. It's like a four hour sort of presentation, just all about business, how to start a business, build a business. If you are a current counselor or therapist, how to really improve your business, or if you're just a coach and you want to be trained as a coach in this area, instead, how to actually start your business from the ground up to work from home, to have that freedom, flexibility, et cetera. So common behavioral coping mechanisms for anxious preoccupied individuals, cleanliness, right? These are these like activating strategies. They will always try to maintain proximity, um, sometimes trying to gently provoke the expression of care from a partner. So that could be like, make you jealous a little bit to provoke a response, fish for compliments, um, you know, try to see if you care and test you a little bit um, in these indirect forms. APs will also seek validation, um, they will often have attention or approval seeking behaviors. Again, it sounds like at a superficial level, like, oh, you're approval seeking. But the reality is like, this is for an AP related to, then you're going to stay connected to me and I'm going to be safe and survive. <laughs> so it's very deep rooted. And, and it means a lot to an anxious preoccupied person to have these things in a relationship. Um, the healing happens when they learn to give these things into the relationship to themselves and, and have healthy, effective strategies to do that. And then also have good systems with friends, family, other relationships to also give this. So it's not just singularly relying on a partner, um, which is sometimes what we fall into when we have a lot of codependent patterns. Um, but that's for another video, another time. Um, this is just about the layout, not the healing. Um, and uh, sometimes an AP will criticize when their needs are not met. It's because they often just don't have better tuned forms of communication. Like they'll say, you never do the dishes instead of saying, hey, I need some support. And that would look like you doing the dishes on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Can you please do that? Like, can you please help me out? You know, I need you sort of thing. Um, so we tend to criticize when we have a need and don't know how to communicate it in a more gentle form. And that often becomes counterproductive. And APs are often big fawners in relationships. They will be big people pleasers. Um, anxious preoccupied individuals as well will tend to communicate through words a lot more than through actions and be more receptive to picking up on word communication than actions. Often when they see like a dismissive avoidant, for example, who tends to communicate more through actions than words, it will feel, feel very confusing. They'll need like word validation, reassurance, clarity, certainty as to like what's really going on. They may not be the best at like reading between the lines um, or nor do they feel good about reading between the lines because they want that sense of certainty and security. Um, anxious preoccupied individuals as well um, may become critical, but then they'll often revert back to people pleasing quite quickly and they will communicate through patterns of fawning. They'll be very like sweet, kind people please often say yes when they mean no and may not even consciously realize it even while doing the thing that they, it's a no for them. Um, and they may have a historic patterns of doing that for prolonged periods of time. It's like if they looked back with more awareness later, they might be like, oh, I did a lot of things that I didn't wanna do because they didn't know how to say no. And I felt like it was wrong to do so. Um, and again, that's because there hasn't been that like interdependency just yet. They're usually still caught in like the codependent dynamic. So very important to pay attention to. And APs will generally communicate um, in sort of like an amicable way. They tend to be quite kind, work well in teams, be very thoughtful. Um, but again, eventually they may become triggered and that's when they may revert back to um, sort of panic mode and can be slightly critical or sometimes can violate other people's boundaries in their nonverbal communication without meaning to, not because they don't care about somebody's boundaries, but because when they're so consumed by their own trauma response and emotional panic and distress, they may not properly see somebody else's boundaries in those moments. So these are some big parts of our anxious preoccupied attachment style, a real deep dive into what this is from an integrated attachment theory perspective. Um, and if you want to do a deep dive into healing, you can sign up with me for the training, or you can also um, take any of our attachment style oriented courses in PDS to help you really learn about reconditioning as a whole. 
So thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being here. Please like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.